What's up, BlackLoveAndMarriage.com family? This is Ayize Ma'at, and I'm here with actor extraordinaire, Brother Ken Bevel, who's the actor in the highly acclaimed, thought-provoking, inspirational, and motivational film, Courageous. How you doing today, Brother Ken? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. My wife and I, we actually went to go see the uh, movie Courageous, and I was totally moved by the film itself. And, you know, I was moved to a point where in the movie I really felt as though, I mean, I was getting choked up, and there were several scenes that, you know, caught me off guard in terms of um, really really delving deeply into what it means to be a father, um, how important fathers are in our community. And I just wanted you to speak for a moment just about the significance of this film, Courageous, and why many people out here need to take a look at it. Absolutely. Uh, when you talk about courageous, you know, and you talk about every every person wants to be a person of courage, meaning that in that time of distress or calamity, they want to be able to stand strong. And the movie Courageous is it, filmed around four police officers who have that time. They're getting calamity in their lives, calamity in their families, and problems in their families. And these men have taken a declaration to stand as courageous men for their families. And uh, so when you look at, when people look at the movie Courageous, uh, just like you mentioned, they will be inspired. Uh, they will be challenged uh, to stand up and not just be the men uh, that they need to be, but also for women and also for children to say, hey, this is, the, this is the standard for the family. This is how a family should look and this is how a family should operate. And, and, and initially, uh, well, overall, the man should be taking the head role for his family, ensuring that they're taken care of, that they're protected, and that they're provided for. Um, absolutely, and what's interesting is that in the movie, it's up against the backdrop of a community that seems to be in a state of distress, in a state of chaos, where there's, you know, rampant crime and, you know, it's a lot of violence that's going on. And um, one of the uh, police officers in the movie, they highlight the fact that, you know, a lot of this crime could be reduced if only the fathers were present in these that's children's right. lives. You know, I found that to be a significant piece because, you know, that's something that we see all of the time. And the work that my wife and I do, we see very frequently that there are fathers who are absent in the homes. And as a result, not only are relationships messed up, but you also have the offspring of those relationships who end up in a compromised situation, which ends up causing problems, you know, for the family, but also causing problems for the community. Uh, You are absolutely right. When you look at... Uh, the statistics. You're looking at 24.7 million children in America that live without their biological fathers. And, you know, 60% of those children have seen their fathers in the past year, and I could go on and on about the statistics. But just like you mentioned, the side effects of these children not being with their biological fathers, on average, you know, they are more likely, you know, to have educational problems, health problems, emotional and psychological problems. And, and they also start suffering from child abuse. So when you start looking at the amount of absentee fathers in the home or, you know, uh, fathers that are in the home that are just not participating in their home, you get a lot more problems within our community. Um, and, and, and we're calling, you know, men to the fact that, hey, look, this is happening in our homes. Our homes are being stole, uh, stolen away from us because we're failing as men, you know, in our homes. So um, we're just basically, like you mentioned, trying to highlight the fact that, you know, you know, it is in God's plan for men to be in the homes and be to be active in their homes and active in the lives of their families. Yeah, and I like, one thing that I really liked about the movie was that, well, first of all, the title, the name of the movie, Courageous. Yeah. Um, that says a lot to me because in that title alone, it indicates that there's going to be some difficulty that you're going to be confronting as you decide or take the step to be a man and be a father and be the head of your home. So, right. you know, and because it takes courage and because there's difficulty that's going to be present, I want you to speak for a moment about the fact that it's not going to be easy. You know, there's going to be challenges out here. And in the movie, we see challenges. You know, we see right. the fact that, you know, it's hard to assume that role, to step in that position, but it's so necessary. If you could just speak for a moment about just the difficulty in doing that, but, you know, overcoming that difficulty and overcoming those feelings that you might feel that are getting in the way. Mm-hmm. When, when you talk about courage, uh, you talk about the ability to confront fear, pain, danger, uncertainty, or intimidation. Uh, it's not the absence of it, but it's the ability to, to confront it. And that's what we're seeing in, in, our, in our society today. Man, you know, the economy's bad. You know, uh, our kids are getting a lot of in, outside influences. 
and sometimes, you know, those problems can become so overwhelming. Uh, we can sometimes feel like we need to retreat from the situation or we need to draw back from the situation. But that's not what courage is, and that's what we're trying to call forth in men and women to say, hey, you know what, these things are coming, but you can stand up and be courageous in the face of this physical pain, in the face of this hardship, death, or uncertainty. You can stand with moral courage. You don't have to back down. You can stand with moral courage through the Lord. So uh, this is what we're encouraging you know, all people to do because uh, uh, increasingly every day, you know, uh, something new is being thrown in our family. And, and when you look at the movie, not only the term courageous, but also the underlying theme of that is to serve and protect. That's what we're supposed to be doing for our families. Mm-hmm. And we can't do that half-heartedly. You have to be courageous to do that. Absolutely. And in several instances in the movie, you demonstrated that. Uh, one scene in particular that stood out to me, let me just make this clear. I have two daughters. We have, I, my wife and I, we have four children. Um, two boys and two girls. And, um, you know, in one scene in the movie, you know, a guy, he comes over to your house and he's looking to take your daughter for a ride. Mm-hmm. And uh, you actually yeah. take him to the side outside of the house and mm-hmm. have a yeah. conversation with him. Now, right. you know, in today's society, you know, a lot of men, unfortunately, might be afraid to confront mm-hmm teenagers, you know, when it comes mm-hmm. to issues around manhood, when it comes to issues around being respectful, but you felt that it was necessary that in order for your daughter to be engaged in a relationship with anybody, that person right. first must get to know you and have a relationship with you and your family before they interact with your child. Just speak on that for a second in terms of why that's important and why more men need to be doing that. A- absolutely. I love that scene uh, when I'm standing there with my daughter and I'm confronting you know, this young man about seeing my, my daughter. But not only does it confer that I'm standing up and I'm trying to ensure that, you know, my daughter is meeting someone that, you know, you know, not necessarily meets my approval, but, you know, has the, uh, the, the best intentions in mind for my daughter. But when you look at that particular scene, I'm standing in between my house and my daughter against this person that's coming in from the outside. So as a man, I'm, I'm, intentionally putting myself in between them as a buffer because my, my daughter is young, she's fragile, and just like any man with a daughter, you know, this is my baby, you know, this is my girl. So I'm going to make sure that any outside influences that she's getting, you know, I'm filtering those before, you know, they even get into my home so we don't have to, you know, deal with those issues at a later date. But in addition to that is that in order for me to speak into her life like that, in order for me to, to challenge her into a greater uh, – uh, era, uh, position of womanhood or, you know, growing to womanhood, I have to, as a father, have the relationship with her to do that. And, and a lot of times when guys, when we check out of the home and we want to get back involved or we, you know, find this, this, you know, urge to get back involved, we try to jump right in and be the authoritarian without creating a relationship with our children. So that's the first thing. We have to make sure those relationships are connected. And then when those critical times like that come or when they're meeting somewhere else, we're able to speak to them in love because of, based on the relationship that we've already built with them. Wow, that was powerful what you just said in terms of, you know, developing that relationship and creating that safe space between you and your daughter for her to be able to come to you and you to be able to come to her. Um, yeah. But in order for you to do that, it was very evident in the movie that you had to create some space within your heart to make mm-hmm. your relationship with your daughter even possible. And one way in which you did that, which actually had my wife crying, um, you know, <laughs> crying in the movie, was that you went to your father's grave site. Yep. And yep. you had to forgive your father, which mm-hmm. created space for you to be able to be a better father. And you can speak on that, because a lot of people are walking around now today, Ken, with pain, yep. with anger, and just are just yep. holding on to the fact that their father was not there for them. And as a result, yep. They can't have the relationships that they need to have today. Absolutely, I, I can. That scene that you saw, I lived out that scene in my own life. You know, I was for a number of years. Uh, my dad was absent from the home, so I was angry. I was bitter, and I, I did not have any forgiveness in my heart. And because of that, that affected all my other relationships. It's a domino effect. You cannot harbor hatred or anger in your heart and respect and expect for other relationships to turn out well. It doesn't happen like that. So in order for me to get past uh, to be a great father to my children, number one, I had to love God. I had to do that first because if I never did that, I could never learn to love anyone else. And then number two, 
I had to ensure that the forgiveness, and I had to ensure that I forgave my father in my heart so that I could be a better father. And then I could exemplify or I could show that to my children and say, hey, you know what, I, I'm not a man, and, you know, I'm going to fail, some things are going to happen, but um, I've shown my father, you know, in my heart that I can forgive him, and I want you to be able to do the same thing in your relationships and in your relationship with me. So um, that that is very, very important. There's no way that you can have a healthy relationship and harbor hate in your heart for anyone else. Mm, that's absolutely true, and and in order for us to have these healthy relationships, it's important that we solidify these relationships by taking proactive steps to that's right. reinforce them. Right. In this movie, you did two distinct things in a ceremonious way that yep. that was, was powerful to me, um, not just in terms of me looking at my relationship with my daughters, but mm -hmm. me looking at my relationship in terms of all of my children, and um, you know just seeing how important it is to take a public stance. And say, right. you know, I am a father. What you did in this movie was you, you, you and the other co-stars, you all uh, publicly acknowledged and took this declaration to heart saying that, you know, I'm going to be a more responsible father, I'm going to be a more available mm -hmm. father, I'm going to be a more present father. And in addition to that, like I said, you ceremoniously took your daughter out to dinner and, 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 and pledged to her that you're going to be there for her and you want to make sure that you are her first love and that any man that comes to her must right. come through you and also must right. to some degree meet your approval and meet your standards, you know, and she agreed right. to that. Right, right, right. And, and, and it's just like, you know, we talked about before, it has to be that relationship there first before you do that. But, and when you look at that, when men grow up, no man wants to say, you know what, I'm going to be a bad dad. In five years, I'm going to divorce my wife and I'm going to leave my family. No man wants to do that. Every man wants to be a good father, a good provider, a good uh, sustainer for his family, you know. So when you look at fatherhood, fatherhood, this is one thing that came out of my mind while we were filming, is fatherhood has to be intentional. Uh, you have to have a plan as a father to lead your children, to lead the hearts of your children. Because everyone out there, you know, entertainment, money, everything out there is vying for their hearts. You know, even at a young age, you go to a supermarket, you know, they got the candy down low because they want your child's heart. They want you to, they want your child to want that candy so they can tell you to get that candy. So everything out there is vying for your child's heart and for their attention. What you have to do is you have to, you know, like we mentioned, create that relationship with them, and then you have to be intentional about what you're teaching them, about what you're showing them, uh, at what times in their lives where you're confirming manhood or womanhood in their lives. You're pulling them apart, you're taking them on trips, and you're spending time with them to, number one, show them how much you love them, and then, number two, to start investing in their lives and saying, you know what, you're getting ready to start dating, you're a beautiful young woman, I know all these men want your heart, but let me tell you, you know, they, they, they want your heart, but they can't treasure it, so if you allow, and I'm taking the scenes right out of the movie, if, if you allow me to help you in that decision, you know, I'll make sure uh, that, you know, we'll make sure together that you choose the right one. You know, every every girl, every boy wants that or someone to walk through life with them and help them to make the critical decisions. So, um, you know, you, you being that father and you being intentional about, you know, growing up, you know, allowing your children to grow up. Yes, yes, we definitely have to be intentional. And, um, you know, I really want to thank you for taking the time to, to speak with me today about this awesome, awesome, awesome movie, the, um, the ministry that you all are providing through this film, the inspiration that you're providing, the um, the thought-provoking um, dialogue that you all offer is so moving. It really is moving. I was moved to tears on many occasions throughout this film, and, and I really thank you and I thank the producers of the film for, for bringing this to a, um, a national audience. Mm -hmm. um, on a quick note, I just wanted to say that in you all's opening weekend, I see mm -hmm. that um, there are more than one million people viewed Courageous yeah. That's in the movie right. theater, it was number one um, yep. new movie of the weekend, and it's opening yep. weekend. So that's, that's quite impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just thanking God for the, the opportunity to get the, the movie out. And, uh, you know, the entertainment is it, definitely entertaining, but the the effect that we want to see behind this is changed lives. You know, men saying, you know what, I have been, you know, being a good dad, but I need to be a great dad. And I need to, you know, mm -hmm. teach and show my children you know how to do that so uh, and we've been seeing that we've been hearing emails about that so that in our eyes is success you know seeing the lives that have been changed and, and, and families that are being redeemed and restored yes indeed thanks again brother Ken and for all the dads out there who are bad dads you can become better dads 
It takes courage. You need to look inside of yourself, dig deep within, and be intentional about the effort that you put into becoming a better father. And for those mm -hmm. fathers out there who are good dads, let's all strive to become great dads. You need to see this film so you can see what it takes to be a father and what it means to be a father. And even if you're a single mother out here, what I would encourage you to do is also go see Courageous because there are men out here who are working hard for the community. And what you'll see in this film is that the impact of fatherlessness is so great that it's important. It's incumbent that you have a man in this boy's life, if you have a son, to help to show him what it means to be a man and what it means to become a man. So I would encourage those single mothers out here to go see Courageous as well. Again, everybody out here should check out this movie. It's a powerful movie. It's an inspiring movie. It's an insightful movie. This movie will definitely elevate you, elevate your family, and elevate the community. So again, go check out Courageous. It's playing nationwide. You'll be in for a treat when you check out this film. Thank you, Brother Ken, for taking the time to speak with me. And I look forward to seeing you in other films because the work that you do and the acting that you provide is such a great work and such an inspiration to us. So thanks again, Brother Ken. All right. Well, praise God, man. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks again for tuning in to blackloveandmarriage.com, and we look forward to engaging you all soon.